On May 21st, I weighed 198.3 pounds. Fast forward one month later on June 21st, which is today as of filming, I weighed 179.8 pounds. In one month, I lost 19 and a half pounds. I'm going to share with you the seven ways that I did it. So growing up, I never had to worry about my weight. I was always a pretty skinny kid. I was 6'1", I weighed 165 pounds. I was at the lower level of just barely being healthy, according to those BMI charts. And so I could eat whatever I want, pretty active kid. But then growing up, as you get into your 30s, you know, the weight starts adding up, especially for entrepreneurs living a busy lifestyle. And I quickly found myself to being almost 200 pounds. And so I decided I gotta get my act together. I gotta lose some weight. Some of you guys have been uh, commenting and noticing. Thank you for the love. And so in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the seven ways that I use to lose 19 and a half pounds in one month. So way number one is I would fast until noon. And fasting for me would be liquids only. And really that's just water, lots of water here and coffee. Now this probably wasn't the healthiest part. I would have two of these that would last me from whenever I woke up, usually around seven ish until 12 o'clock, one o'clock. And this is an extra large two milk, one sugar from Tim Horton. So having two extra large coffees probably wasn't the healthiest choice in the morning, but I found that one, the caffeine really helped curb the appetite. And I found if I delayed my eating until the afternoon, then I could consume the calories that I needed in the afternoon and not get started too early. I found when I started eating too early, then, <laughs> then I just kept eating all day long and, and I found it difficult to kind of stay on the diet. It's 11.55. Decisions. What am I gonna order? What am I gonna eat? And so fast into noon, only water and coffee. And then I would eat my first meal at noon at the earliest, sometimes one or even 1.30. Way number two is 30 minutes of cardio every day. What I found the easiest thing to do was actually just at night, at nine o'clock, I would set a routine that my wife and I would usually watch something on TV, some show. Uh, we'd watch Arrow or Billions or what else do we watch? Arrow, Billions, some Gotham, Blind Spot. We mix between the shows. We sit down at nine, nine o'clock and I would run on the spot at nine o'clock. So it would just be like, while we're watching the show, I'd be like this. I'd be running, running, running for half an hour. After that, I do some stretching. And usually those shows with no commercials go about 40-ish minutes, 42 minutes. So it was the perfect time. So I knew nine o'clock, watch the show, half an hour running, 10 to 12 minutes of stretching afterwards. It was the perfect setting and then have a shower and get ready for bed. I've since adjusted it just recently where I do a morning run instead. I usually run to the local Whole Foods. That's about 15 minutes away. Uh, then pick up a kombucha, some salad, bananas maybe and come back. But for most of that weight loss journey, it was a nine o'clock, 30 minute run. And I did that every single day of the week. Way number three is I use the Seinfeld technique. And the Seinfeld technique is to print a calendar for the year. So here's mine, my calendar for the year. And basically every single day, you wanna mark it off with an X on the calendar when you've done that thing. And so for me, the two things I was tracking was running 30 minutes a day and fasting until noon. If I did that, I would get an X. And so the goal is to not break the chain. And so every single day I would get my X and you can see here, I started it this just before my May 21st date. So May 21st is what? Here somewhere. And up until June 21st, which is today. It's not quite noon filming this yet, so I can't mark it off. But that really helped just kind of stay on track and you like to see the progress. And when you see those X's coming on, you don't want to break the chain. So you want to keep going every day. Way number four was I used Saturday as a cheat day and that was when I could eat whatever I wanted. You know, there was no calorie restrictions. I just ate, 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 but I still had to keep my chain. So I still was running for 30 minutes in the day and I was still fasting until noon. And this was one of the hardest things because I'd get this delicious donut from Tim Hortons or uh, this breakfast uh, that ends at noon. And so I really wanted to eat that. So we buy it a couple minutes early. I'd be sitting there looking at my donut, like nom, nom, nom. I got five minutes left before I can eat this thing. And then once noon came, I'm like, 
shove it in. <laughs> so Saturday is my cheat day, but I still am on my fast until noon. It's 15 minutes till noon, and I'm excited to dig into my Boston cream donut. This is going to be a brutal 15 minutes. I love it. So that really helped. It helps. It helps on a psychological level to have one day when you can eat whatever you want. And I think there's also a lot of research that backs up having a cheat day to kind of spike your levels and then come back down can actually facilitate more weight loss as well. And so I found that really helpful, but I kept to my fasting until noon and running 30 minutes a day. Guys, when you persevere and it's hard and you make it through and you win, the victory is just so much sweeter. Hmm. Oh my God, so good. Way number five was no packaged foods. And so I made a decision apart from the coffee that I would have in the morning, I wouldn't eat anything from a package. So nothing with a wrapper, nothing uh, store bought that was not just processed, but even healthy stuff I wouldn't eat from a wrapper. So I would eat protein bars before and just other things from a package and decided, nope, not gonna do that anymore. And most of my diet consists of fish, we don't really eat a lot of meat except on Saturdays, just fish and vegetables, fish, vegetables, nuts, um, mostly assortment of white fish, cod, uh, different fillets, haddock, uh, walleye, a bunch of stuff. Nina's been fantastic in helping kind of prepare all the foods and it's great having a partner on this journey. So she's eating basically the same stuff I am. And then broccoli and cabbage and green beans and sugar snap peas and it's basically pretty easy to get filled up because you're only really eating two big meals a day. Uh, I would start usually at noon eating a banana, or two bananas, probably two bananas, sometimes three bananas in a day, and then into my lunch and then into my dinner and that would be it. I would snack on nuts um, and everything basically not from a package, trying to, trying to stay healthy, trying to stay clean and it's really helped with the weight loss. Way number six is use MyFitnessPal. MyFitnessPal is an app that allows you to track your calories and I'll load it up here to show you guys. So what you can do is put in the foods. Can you see, can you see, can you see? Anyway, what you can do is you, they have goals. This is a free app that's put out by Under Armour. I think it's Under Armour. Uh, you can put in your goals of how high you are, like how, how high you are. You pick how tall you are, what your goal is for weight and how quickly you wanna achieve it. And then it'll give you a calorie target. And then you can enter in your food and it gives you a sense of what every single meal looks like. And so if you're eating an avocado, you might think that's really healthy, but has a lot of calories. And so just being able to balance it out. If you are educated to know what is in your food, there are days that I will go to, I will go to Tim Hortons and get a crispy chicken sandwich, which is fried chicken uh, and bread and, you know, fairly high calories, like 540 calories, something like that. But it fits, it fits within my day. And so just educating yourself on how many calories are in each meal is great. It has a barcode scanner. So if you are eating out, then you can easily find most of the foods at, at the major chains. If you are eating anything from a package, you can barcode scan it and it'll tell you the nutritional breakdown on it. And it'll tell you how much you should be eating in terms of protein, fat, and carbohydrates and then you can see am i matching up and i think the biggest thing for me was just recognizing the difference in the foods and educating myself so that i could eat more appropriately and match my intake to where i should be and so why we do a lot of fish is because it's insanely high protein so you get your protein targets easily and not a lot of calories and so if you're eating that it's a lot easier to fill up your day with other stuff that you want to eat because you're hitting your targets at a really low calorie level so i would highly recommend checking out my fitness pal free to use and uh, there's a premium program that you can upgrade to i don't use it but you can and it'll help you on your journey and way number seven this is the most recent thing that i'm doing i'm trying to substitute out coffee for kombucha and so kombucha is supposed to be super healthy, full of probiotics, got a, got a whole bunch of stuff floating around in it. And I do my morning run to Whole Foods, pick up a kombucha. I am now between one kombucha and no coffees to, to one coffee a day. And I'm slowly starting to substitute out the coffee for kombucha. During the week, the coffee is the only thing really in my diet, apart from Saturday, that, that is junky, that is not healthy, that is from a box, that is packaged. And so I want to slowly reduce that and replace it with the kombucha. And then on weekends, Saturday, Saturday only, eat whatever I want. 
And so those are the seven things that's really helped me on my weight loss journey. Again, at the beginning, I never thought I had to worry about it. Growing up was always super skinny and always healthy. And at some point, life catches up with you and you got to decide to invest in yourself and uh, and be healthy. So those are the things I did. I would love to hear from you which one had the biggest impact on you, which one might shift your perspective. I would love for you to share your story as well. And if I miss an 8, 9, 10 that you want to add to the list that has helped you, please put in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon. If you tell yourself a story long enough, you start to believe it. Once you believe it, you act like it. I have tussled with a whale out of handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. Now you know I'm bad. Only last week I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean I make medicine sick. <laughs> the fundamental key to success is... It can take between 18 and 254 days of taking action for a new habit to stick. I've created a new course called 254 Confidence where every single day for 254 days I will be sending you a video between 30 seconds and 5 minutes long that you start your morning with around making you feel confident. It's absolutely free. Check out the link in the description below to get access.